two, and one. We are live. What is up, ATG fam? Um, so glad to be back in the studio. First time in the new studio, guys, and I am super excited. Um, I've been in a new spot for a couple months now, and I wanted to wait till the whole studio was fully set up before I have a guest on. And uh, I've been going over in my head, like, who should be the first guest in the new studio? Like, this is like a new beginning, a new era, episode 60, like, it's got to be a special one. And, uh, you know, I was going through all my friends, all of, like, you know, people who are popping up in Albuquerque. And uh, one person kept coming, like, in my mind, you know, like, my heart was, like, calling. And uh, that person is my mother, Mama Grain. Melissa Griego, the person who raised me and uh, basically taught me everything I know. Um, she's always brought me back on track in life and uh, she'll give you the hard truth even if it's not what you want to hear. Anyways, with no further um, introduction, I want to bring in my mother, Melissa. Hold up. Yay. Let's do this. Hi, Mom. So, Mom, um, I want you to just make sure that this is, like, right within a fist of your mouth, okay? Can you tell me? So, just adjust it however you want. Like, see how close I am? Yes. Okay. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. I like your glasses. I like them, too. <laughs> so, if you guys can't ha ha can't notice, but uh, my mom has, like, a... She has a customized against the grain ho hockey jersey I gave her for Christmas, I think. It says Griego on the back. It says Griego on the back. Christmas gift. And, uh... Yeah, I'm so glad to see you repping it in this hot studio. <laughs> Proud mom. Yes. Well, mom, um, I've told everyone, like, leading up to this pod, I'm so nervous because, you know, we've been through so much together. Um, I mean, you obviously, you raised me my whole life, and you've seen me through ups and downs. And that was a lot. A lot. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so my mom definitely learned patience through me. <laughs> Um, but I kind of wanted to, for you, for people to know you and your story, you know, like where everyone knows you as my mom and Melissa Griego and all my friends, you know, but like, I want you to start like from where you even grew up. Like where, where did you, where did your beginning start at? Well, born in Albuquerque, um, uh, until I was about four years old and then, well, maybe four and a half, five. Auntie was born then, and then we moved to Grants. So Grandpa Larry got in with the mines out there. Mm. Followed uh, Auntie Nina's dad, Manny, and Addie, and went out there to Grants, and the mines were booming at the time, around 1975. So that's where we lived for many years till I was about 15 years old. So Grants is really where I grew up. So I didn't really go to elementary school in Belen. Um, went to Belen the last... Actually, like the middle of my ninth grade year. Dang. So most of my life was in Grants growing up. That's mm -hmm. that seems like a really hard time to move like schools and stuff, like that the beginning hard. of high school. Well, it was really hard because Grants was high school. So in ninth grade, Grants was high school, and then when I moved to Belen, ninth grade was middle school. Oh my gosh. So I went from high school football games. And then you're hanging out like with a bunch and of little then I went kids. Back to middle school. So ninth grade, you're like the the end yeah. of the. You're the last class in middle school yeah, before you go to high school. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so wow. it was just a different life. And then I came back. Parents got divorced and went to Belen, and that's where I ended up. Oh, and so right you, so you spent all your high school uh, career and throughout throughout your whole life in Belen high and school, yeah. with uh, Grandpa Larry, right? Mm -hmm. So you, li yeah. you and Auntie Jen lived with Grandpa Larry. Yeah. So he, yeah. So we lived with Grandpa Larry. And on a restate in Grants just because of the job she had. Mm -hmm. So we came down. We had family. Dad always wanted to move to Belen, always. And Nonnery never wanted to. So this was kind of his opportunity to move yeah. to Belen. Because he his found horses, the, that job. Have his land. Yeah. And then he was in between his uh, finger surgery. Mm. So he was on compensation and didn't have the job at the time. So this was his opportunity. And Nana stayed back. And then me and Auntie went with Dad. Wow. And we were with family. You know, the whole Harales. Tata, everyone. All the uncles and aunts and cousins, and really was a great way to grow up, too. Yeah. You know, it really, really was. So, um, yeah, that's where I ended up in we high school. We have such a big there. family that, that uh, you know, if you guys don't know, like, the Padillas, the family that we have, we are there, ride or die, mm -hmm. no matter what you need, always be there. Yep. So, it was probably, like, a good, warm welcoming, you know, from all of your cousins and, 
you know, all, yes. everyone that we just saw this last week, mm-hmm. like you're, you're closer to all of them. Yes, it kept us close. And then being raised with Datha right there. So he yeah. did a lot of our raising. And My like Datha was like, we all call him Datha. He was like El Jefe of Belen. Like he lived to what, 94? Yeah, ni- yeah 93. 93 years old. Yep. And he had the biggest family. Well, How he many lost, kids he did he He lost have? his wife at 40, when she was 45 years old. Wow. So my grandma passed away at 45. He had 10 kids. Oldest, I want to say 19, youngest five. Yeah. And he raised them. He continued to raise all the kids in the house. Dang. And they never remarried. So that's just the kind of life they lived. You know, they just, we never even saw him with anybody. Like his kids were his family. That's, his that's life crazy. His his family. He'd make tortillas every day and chili and beans every single day. So he would always pack you like a breakfast burrito for lunch? Every morning, me Hold and on, Auntie. I'm going to check if we're recording. Keep talking. Me and Auntie Jen had a tortilla omelet with red chili every single morning fresh tortillas he'd get up at probably 4 30 in the morning and have fresh tortillas Dang. stacked fresh chili i'm not kidding and fresh omelets <sighs> and he would just roll it like a taco and put red chili in there and me and auntie would give us a dollar one dollar for, for lunch. the day to get you through That's the all day we needed and um he would send us off the bus would pick us up right in front of the house and we had our breakfast wow. every single morning through high school he fed us what was it like going to uh Belen High School. Well, was it hard school, to make friends or well, middle that, school? That ninth grade was really hard. Because you're the outsider. There's like this yes. beautiful new girl who girls are probably all jealous of or like, who's this girl? Oh, I know how yeah, girls are. It was, girls it was are hard. Catty. It was really, really hard. The funniest thing, though, is that you know how people talk and there's rumors. Everybody said there's a girl from France and it was Grants. <laughs> <laughs> so they were like, Dad, is this girl from France? And they'd be talking about me right next to me. And I'm like... You're like, these guys are they stupid. They think I don't understand English. And I'm like, it's Grant. And I was like... Grant. So they thought you didn't even speak English? Yeah, like they you're were from like, the outside. girl's from France over there. And it was oh just hilarious God. to me. But um, I did have my cousin Rachel, you know, uh, Uncle Ruben's yeah. daughter. So me and her were a year apart in school. So she was like... She would kind of look after me. you Yeah, that was school. like my first. I'm like, Rachel, oh my gosh, meet me after first period. Or, you know, I really mm-hmm. didn't know anybody. So we'd eat together, and she was like my cousin friend for so long yeah. during school during those years because it was really hard. So she's a year older than you? A year younger. Or a year younger. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So Damn. me and her were close in age. So she got me through that, and it was in the middle of the year, so that those half of the year was really difficult, and wow. she got me through, definitely. Did you have to get in, in any fights or no? No, but I almost did. I was right. I was right. This one girl just kept picking on me. And the funny thing is, her boyfriend that thought like me, we, we were we ended up being cousins. We were cousins. Oh, so Belen. So Belen. And I didn't even know we were cousins, I think, until within that week. Yeah, if you guys grow up in Belen you, and you like a girl, you better do a full background check. Yeah. And Before we were. And we were just, I, I don't know. So she was, we were probably nose to nose by the bus. I'll never forget. And I was just like, if it might happen right now, I, I might have to be ready. I have to be ready for this. Was she a big girl? Like, was she like? No, she was just tough. Just tough mean, like cowgirl. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, oh cowgirl. Here we go. But the funny <sighs> thing is, ironically, so we didn't fight. I was just waiting for her to throw the first, you know. And um, I th- and I even think I said we're cousins. I said just chill out, you know, go do your research yeah, or whatever. Like, but we had just found out we were cousins. So that was, was interesting. But still... anyways, ironically, within that next year, we became best friends. You know how that happens. Of course. Yes. So we became best friends. We ended up at a party together or something. And mm-hmm. she was like, you're really pretty cool. And I'm like, well, sh- <laughs> yeah, goodness. You didn't even give me a chance. To, yeah. <laughs> so we became really best friends for a, a few years. You know, we yeah. were really, I've all through high school. That's cool. She was one of my good friends. Dang. So yeah, it was. That's that tough. I had to ask because, like, I don't know, like, the way Belen is, they're real territorial. Mm-hmm. And especially girls. Guys are, but girls are, like, catty for yeah. sure. And it's still, I mean, and girls are girls. Yeah, so. girls, but I it, guess it, anywhere. Yeah, and it got better, definitely. And uh, so so while you were going through high school and stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh, do I take my? You could take, whatever, you could keep them on or take them off. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I noticed. I'm looking at you. You look super cool with them on. I don't know. I'm going to take them off. <laughs> okay. So, uh. Throughout high school, you met my dad, right? Brian Grego, yes. who was a guest already on the podcast. And, uh, you know, throughout, within your high school career, when did you meet him? Like, because you guys have known each other since then. Since we were 15. So very, well, I moved to Blend 14. 
So 15, shortly after that, I think that summer. Wow. That spring, actually, that spring or summer, he was on the bus, and one, a mutual friend uh, introduced us. Mm -hmm. And so I, he was getting in the bus. Actually, he uh, was in a class that was an office aide. <clears throat> And um, I don't know why they put me as office aide when I first get there. So then I have to go to every class as a new student. But I would walk into this one class, and um, Dad would be sitting at the back back. And when I was walking out, he just would look at me. You know, he just has his big green eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and his big green eyes would just, just look at me like that. And I'm just like, oh, he's so cute. And he's a year younger than you, right? <clears throat> he was in eighth grade. So he I was, was like... Nine. So I just knew who he was by that, mm -hmm. by just seeing this kid with his big green eyes looking at me. <laughs> and then we had a mutual friend, so he was getting in the bus, and through the window, this guy, Jay, he's like, hey, I want to introduce you. And I went up to the bus. This mm -hmm. is Brian Grego. This is Melissa. And he hates the story, but he said hi, and it didn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> like, he what says, do you mean? <laughs> and he said hi, and you're like, is the guy going to be all, hey. Yeah, yeah. And, and his voice cracked. Hi, and it cracked so bad. <laughs> And he swears it did. And he just, it just cracked. It was so cute. And I'm like, hi, nice to meet you. And we kind of both laughed. Oh, man, yeah. that's so funny. Yeah, I could relate because my voice still does that. And it, like, happens when I'm at work and I have to give a presentation. I'll be like, good morning. Yes. And everyone, I could know, to already tell everyone's laughing. Yeah, Dad wanted to be so cool and, like, hey, and it, it cracked. He just said hi, and it just didn't come out. <laughs> So that was our first like first encounter met. where you so yeah. you remember that moment like when you actually like yes. were like hey this is Brian that's specifically Dang, fifteen years old that's really young so like yeah. right when you moved to Belen so you we, kind of yeah. already knew mm -hmm. who he was mm -hmm. or whatever right away we were friends for a while yeah not that long well I mean we've... high school like I mean you since you like that's very rare for someone to like end up with someone that they dated like in high school or you know or yeah, even knew in high school right. And but so if like, you ask dad, we didn't officially date, you know. So right, right. Said That's what I'm have saying. It's like two years after we got married. Yeah. <laughs> but we did, like, we were starting well, to Well, you talk. were young. You kind of, like, you are you were, like, in, like, how I was, like, in high school, like, college. Like, I just want to live my life. I want to be, yeah. travel. And, like, you have all these, yeah. like, things of, like. Yeah. But, like, you knew, like, in the back of your mind, you, like, well, like yeah, always, he, like, had that look sure. for him. Well, he was, like, the best guy ever he still is you know he yeah. still has that reputation and every girl liked him they used to say lego my ego brian griego in elementary that's so that's funny that's how far he goes back. <laughs> so i knew he was a catch and he was a wrestler and and more than anything he was just damn brian genuine. griego and he had an i heart jesus sticker on his truck and i'm like hey this guy is that's against the grain that's against the grain he didn't care what anybody thought and so he you know for sure and he was so cute and so nice but mm -hmm. yeah and then fast forward, like after high school, you so guys. After those years. So you, so dad went to Marines. He enlisted pretty quick. And you were at the time kind of living in, in DC, like for the summer with Auntie well, Louise, no, right? Not yet. No, I, went, I moved to Albuquerque. Oh, so okay, okay. As soon as I graduated, I moved to Albuquerque with Honoree. Oh, okay. And I lived there until I got pregnant with you, basically, like yeah. five years. So Dang. dad went to the Marines. I went, lived in Albuquerque, Nonnery, kind of like roommates. Mm -hmm. Lived with Melinda, Carmela. We had a few roommates that we lived with. And those were just the college years, yeah, fun years, whatever. fake ID years. Fake ID? Yeah, somebody told me, you had a fake ID? <laughs> like, we did. How did you get one of those back in the day? I'm not even going to tell you how I did it. Would they even use your picture or was it no. someone else that looked yes, like you? Yes, it was my picture. But it was like Hawaii <laughs> license. No, it was something. not. It was Auntie Nina. Nina, Brenda. <laughs> So we would, yeah, we would walk in. It was, so it was your picture, but Auntie Nina's, like, information? Got it right away. Yo, 18. shout out to Auntie Nina. Yeah. She, she's my... She was, like, my older godmother. sister. Godmother. Yeah, godmother, older sister. So, yeah, we did that. So that's that was, and then Judith. Judith was there Judith in the is your best friend all through high school, she still, an in, still well, in our actually, lives. Well, she went to New Mexico State. So she went to New Mexico State. I went to UNM. Mm. But we were still connected every weekend. If Whether she'd come here, I'd go over there. And Yeah, Judith's older brother, Manny, like, he was, like, the life of the party on. Like, he always had, like, he was in college and probably through the biggest parties. Oh, yeah. And so you guys would, like, probably just go, like, hang oh, out. Yeah. Didn't you guys used to go to Wada's back in the day? Yes. So back so in the day, to, sorry, I don't mind giving too much information. <laughs> no, everybody has a past. Because <laughs> in, in Juarez, I mean, it's probably not like not like this anymore, but like you could be 18 and you could drink, right? Mm -hmm. So if, as long as you were over 18, like you could just go buy yeah. alcohol. I mean, it was safer, I guess. It still was pretty dangerous, but 
So it was, it was normal for all the college kids to uh-huh. go to Juarez and hang out. We'd go to Juarez, out. we'd dance and, you know, do our thing and, you know, dancing Sipa was part tequila. of our thing. Yep. Dance Did they used tequila. to have the tequila? Did they still have those ones with the worm at the bottom? Yes. Remember grandpa, grandpa used to have that? He had the worm no. in his teeth. He would eat it, huh? Yeah. My I'm grandpa, sorry. her dad, was one of the best guys ever, but he's also one of the craziest guys ever. And a lot of people say that like, I'm kind of like him a lot, like in certain ways, like, you know, I'm a very nice guy and stuff, but like I'll self-sabotage sometime or I'll get, you know, like we just have that in us no, like his, that. Your wild side is my dad. I but definitely. a good side too. He was good and he was both. Yeah. And it's He's like, you know, it's side. like, uh, I but don't know. He... I just feel like we have a lot in common. But anyways, like Grandpa Larry, like he was the type of guy to like drink the bottle of whiskey and eat the worm at the bottom mm-hmm. and not like care. Mm-mm. Or he would get, like, a dead mouse and, like, pretend he's going to eat it. Yes. Cra- yeah, like he, he did crazy things. And he, he broke his finger, actually, finger wrestling, right? You know how you said you had to get that surgery? And he was, like, already, like, over 40, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. 40 yeah. years old. He actually removed finger his finger. Finger wrestling someone. So instead of arm wrestling, it's finger. finger. So you guys lock fingers and you literally battle to, like, the death. Yeah. And he just shattered Grandpa's he, finger, basically? Just, yeah. I mean, it was just, it was out of the socket. It was just gone. So he had to get that finger removed and they like brought all the other fingers in. So it, if you shook his hand, like he had. And you really couldn't tell because they were like this. Together, huh? Yeah. So he would kind of pretend he was E.T. <laughs> he'd go, hi. <laughs> he'd, he'd wave like this. Yeah. So everybody knew his hand. So you really couldn't tell. And that's yeah. what he was known for was his. Dang. Like so, that. so anyway, so you, you know, you, you had me whenever you were 21, right? Mm, pregnant 21 yeah close to 22 yeah 22 ish mm-hmm. and so what was 22. that like i mean i just think of like my head space when i was 21 and did it make you mature yeah. way quick yes definitely like, our does lives it change changed. your life instantly oh yeah it changed our life and dad just got out of the marines and i was still in the midst of college and we kind of were apart for a while. We were mm-hmm. back and forth a lot yeah. through our whole journey. It was back and forth, back and forth till we got married. And he always loves to say that. I didn't have her until we got married. And and uh, so anyways, yeah, we, well, got pregnant, which, you know, it was it was meant to be. Because yeah. I think dad, remember, he wanted to marry me at 15. That was <laughs> dad no lie. He would have married me at 15 years old. I think told me he wanted to marry me at 15. <laughs> I'm and just going to make sure so, we're rolling. So, for sure, this was the guy I know I always loved. Know that this was a guy that was meant for me, the guy that was good for me. And he pursued me for years. So, when I got pregnant, it was, I think it was really God's plan. Yeah. You know, I think it was a way for me to just, you know, just settle in and settle down and, and just love. Yeah. You know, let those walls come down. Mm-hmm. I That's think hard that to was do. Meant for me because it's hard mm-hmm. because I was the oldest. I had, I was the caretaker and, you know, coming from divorced home, I was just kind of anti, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit marriage. Like, I don't know, you know, you've seen a lot of bad relationships. So right. I had a lot of walls around me. And so I think it was time. And those walls did. You broke those walls. You started it. You and dad. That's so it. it was good. You know, it was, it was, I got pregnant and yes, it's terrifying and scary. We weren't married. Everybody so you still finished school after you had me, right? Yeah. So you had me, and you were still trying to finish. Still, and you that's got your why teaching you and degree. Luke were five and a half years apart. Because you guys wanted to figure everything out. I had to get everything school. lined Dad up. Dad was at Sandia part time. I was a student, and I just wanted to get my degree. It was important for me to do yeah. that. So I thought because you were the first in your family mm-hmm. at the time to get a bachelor's, right? Yes. That's that's a big step. Yes. Yeah, so cool. I was determined, and even though that that the grandpa was pretty crazy, education was really important to him. Mm-hmm. Because he almost was an architect. He was at UNM. I used to go to his classes at UNM. Mm-hmm. Honor, we used to work at Circle K, pregnant with Auntie. Damn. And I would go with Grandpa to his UNM classes. I guess they didn't have a babysitter. And I remember sitting at the UNM park or the outside. And yeah. just sitting there watching Duck him do homework. Whatever. Yeah, I, was, I would go to class with him. Wow. We spent a lot of time together. And so he was close to a, like a two-year with being an architect. And right. And draftsman. He always was drafting and drawing. Dang. So... As so he had that in him, was, like it was. He was in. really strict about school. Like I would change my F's to B's, and like I was terrified to bring him a bad report card. So it really mattered to it him. It mattered like, to him. It wasn't like it was important for me and Auntie to, to school was important. So I knew that I had to do that, and so having you, I needed more. Mm-hmm. I continued with just you, though. That's why you you were so far apart from the other kids. Yeah, and so so at the time, good thing you had so many like friends and family. 
Yeah, you like were Auntie all over. Jen took care of me. Everybody took care Grandpa. of me. That's why he is who he is. <laughs> the people person that loves everybody and does well with everybody. Yeah, I was raised by a community of people for sure. And it was hard back then because my I didn't really have my mom and we didn't have Nana Lynn. Mm-hmm. So we had to draw on, you know. I would stay at Auntie Nina. And then the Auntie and Oteros, remember? Million Wilfred. Million Wilfred. They spoke they spoke he spoke Spanish, fluent Spanish. Yeah. And um So yeah. they taught me a little bit. Yeah, a lot. I would try to talk to you and you had no idea what I was telling you. <laughs> I was telling Josh, walk to mom, and he would just look at me, and then he and then he was like, you gotta say dando, you gotta say, you know, and I go, oh, and then you would walk to me. Damn. So you're pretty. So it's that's why I could uh-huh. pretend like I speak Spanish, but I don't yeah, really know. Pretty it. fluent in Spanish, and then of course there was Auntie Jen on her summers and mm-hmm. taking you in the Bronco at like sixteen, and I was and always grandpa. just somewhere. I would always be at someone's every house. Every day, and then Auntie Nina and Chelsea. It's right. like every day I think was different. Yeah. And, and it was have, at a young, young age. And then you were with a babysitter for a while. Mm-hmm. And then when I went in and you were sleeping on a mat, then I got kind of, I was Tanya's about mom? That. Wasn't uh, she oh my yeah, babysitter? Jenny, yeah. Jenny. Well, she had like a daycare. Yeah. And, you know, but it was, that but what was did you hard say? for you. You walked in and I was well, sleeping on a mat. Well, I walked in because he doesn't eat cheese. So everything that she made, you wouldn't eat because she'd make cheese. Like, you know, ch- yeah, ch- yeah. macaroni and cheese. And she's like, he didn't eat Since I was day. little, I don't like cheese. So, I'll, I'll eat it now, though. So it was so. hard for you to be in that setting of, like, a daycare because mm-hmm. you just were against the grain. I know. <laughs> so you I were, would rather starve than eat cheese, I guess. You're like, he hasn't eaten since all day. I don't know. And I'm like, so. And yeah. was I just sleeping on a mat when you got, got yeah, me? Yeah, I go get you and you were, yeah, you were sleeping on the floor of the little mat. I was like, oh, it was so hard to leave you. I hate it leaving you. But me and dad were just trying. We were young parents yeah. trying to work. That's a hard decision to make because it's like, you know, those hard. beginning years of a kid is like, yeah, that's like when I they learn everything. They pick up on things and, yeah. and and you don't know, like you're taking a gamble of like, I don't know how he's going to turn out being around all these mm-hmm. people. Like, what are they yeah. teaching him? And like your first, when you have your first kid, I think it depends on your age. You usually have kids young and you're just trying to make it. Right. So me and dad were just trying to make it and trying to just, you know. Get by right, and like just create a life for your, for yourself. Yeah, so we didn't have you were with Auntie Karen and Uncle Marty every week, and well, that was your choice. Yeah, I like that. Going was there. like take me to Baby Martin's. I want to go to Baby Martin's. So that was your every. But you were like too asking to do that. You really? were even sad to leave me. He was never sad I to leave me. I know. I don't have attachment. That's why I don't <laughs> have attachment issues. <laughs> was attached to me since he was born. He was like. I know. I think so. I just actually like looked at it like a different way, like. I looked at it through like an adventure, like fun, like oh, what do they have? Do they got toys I don't have? Yeah, or, you would easily just you know, run off, like okay, I wasn't no, like mom, no, like never. Which never I, cried I guess for that me. made, huh? Never cried for me. But I love you though. I just like didn't, the other two made up for it. I didn't think about it like how mm-hmm. other like you but thought it was, about that's it. That's how it was. Like you were talking to Rico the other day, Rico and Andre and right. Joseph, and you were just you know. Yeah. So it's crazy because on out of like our family, like Auntie Jen and all the grandkids, I'm the first. So I'm the oldest on yes. this side of the family. But on like the Padilla side or even like all your friends, I was the youngest. Yeah. So like Rico, Andre, Joseph, the twins, all of my cousins, Chelsea. Chelsea, everyone was older in high school. So I would like go hang out with them for the weekend and be like the youngest. And you kind of grew up fast. And like then that. I would pick up on things yeah. and then I would go hang out with like Martin or someone and like it would seem like. And Martin was just your twin, your buddy. Yeah, Martin was like my best friend. Yeah. But like I would hang out with kids like my age and I'd be like, what are you saying? Like that's oh, dumb. Yeah. Like I was going... like, why are you talking like that? <laughs> <laughs> and then Martin would say our children be like, our other. <laughs> our other. He, he would look at kids like. Because I thought I was so much more older and mature. He was, yes, I, and you were tinier. Than I would everybody. hang out with Joseph and like thought I was all cool, and then and I would come out. And then he'd go with kids his own age and be like, "Why are you talking like that? <laughs> Why are you acting like that?" Yeah. yeah, it's so cool though because now like I see all these people. I saw Rico. We saw Rico the other day, and I, like they're always gonna have those memories. Yeah, you guys like back. doing stuff on the ditch bank, shooting uh, prairie dogs, just whatever. You know, back then it was different. Like, there was no phones. You didn't have a phone until you were, like, a senior in high school. You guys just played. I mean, you would just drop me off, and, and you would even tell me, like, after wrestling practice, I would have to borrow someone's phone every day. I know. I was kind of strict about that. So, my mom would just always have to answer random calls because it was, it was me, yeah. usually. Oh, we had caller ID. Remember caller ID? So, if there was a name I didn't recognize, I'm like, oh, there's Josh. Yeah. Because I knew you were using somebody's phone. Yeah, I didn't have a phone till what, junior? I was pretty strict till like, 16. I was so adamant. We were the strictest with you. You know, I think every parent can say that. When you're raising your kids, the first, you want to do everything right. 
you want to do everything that you know the mistakes you had so i think with you we were the hardest yeah because we were just trying to make you you know yeah you into this perfect child and yeah i think with that it was the most spankings you were the most strict we held back the most but yeah, it, yeah. I, it's like i i won't know until it happens but i'm sure it'll be the same for me yeah like that first kid you have, you're like yeah you're just trying to do everything right and then and by so the third the one or the second one, you're like, eh, whatever. I know, like, is Hannah breathing? <laughs> <laughs> she okay? I'm like, Mom, it's one in the morning. Where's Hannah? Ah, she'll be all right. I'm like, she's I'm like You're like, Duke Back in the day, it'd the be like bank? 10 p.m. And you'd call me all angry. Where are you at? I know, forever. And Hannah, you're like, ah, I don't know. I think she's at a party. I'm like, <laughs> boy, have times changed. Because for me, it but was I way about different. You, you were Well, because, yeah, because I had already, like, shown that, like, I have those tendencies to you know drink or do whatever we were just always and god would always find a way to like let you guys know that i was doing bad huh always like i would be like always so i would call my mom moms know this god (laughs) will always show you maybe not right away but in time you'll be like oh so like i would call my mom and be like yeah i'm at mike's house we're we're about to go to bed all right i love you and then i would hang up and we'd talk and then i would accidentally butt dial her Oh, you butt dialed. I would butt so dial her, and times. she would hear me at the loudest party ever. I know. Me and Dad would do the same. She was like, and then I would look at my phone, and it was on my on oh, for thirty minutes. Listen. Yeah, me and Dad were sitting at the bed just. Who listening knows like what this? the heck you heard? Brat. And so you can't call me because you're just like listening. No, like, like he doesn't even know. Or yeah, we. Or remember, to like so. I would have like the I would have a party, and then like I would clean everything up. Yes. And then like the next day, Hannah, little Hannah, she was like five years old. She would like find a beer pong ball and be like, "What's this, mom? Why yeah, does it smell weird?" She picked up the, bo- the beer pong and it it was like, "Mom, it's wet. Why is this?" And I smelled it. I'm like, "This is beer. <laughs> what is going on?" Oh yeah. And then so there's always ways God would like. I would think I got away with it, and one way or another, it would come back around. It would. I would find out. And even recently, just the other day, I was telling Josh just a few weeks ago. This other guy told me, "Yeah, I've been in your house. I used to go to parties at your house all the time." <laughs> I'm like, what? Some, goes, yeah, some random some guy, guy I just met. He's like, yeah, you got a nice house. I like you that. You have a nice house. I've been there a few times. And Josh had really good parties. I'm like. You're like, yeah, that was my house, not his. Yeah. So God always would show me. Yeah. And like, you always hit those roadblocks. And I hit like several of them that God will just put to make you like, in my eyes, like God, like I'm his. You're, and you know, like he, like I made like a. I gave my life to God like a long time ago and I feel like since then God no matter what will try and find a way Mm -hmm. and it's like I'm like we're like stubborn kids you know what I mean he'll always bring you back and so like he doesn't want to do it but he'll find ways to bring you back or put a halt in your life and and a lot of it might not be like you know like even like my rib injuries Mm -hmm. like he'll put these things that are like remind you like hey you need to slow down yeah Mm -hmm. you're living too fast you're doing this like put the brakes on it and so I feel like I hit like a lot of road bumps like that in life. Only because he loves you. God yeah. loves you. So that's like my positive way of looking at all the roadblocks in my life is like, nope. Because I think about it. Anytime I hit those roadblocks, like when I even got like in trouble, when I got arrested mm-hmm. or when I like, you know. Well, that got... night I prayed. It's weird going back to moms again, whatever moms are watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, I remember that just praying for you and just yeah. saying, God, what, you know, like, whatever, do whatever it, takes. it takes. I just feel like you were on that road. A little bit and just praying because that's what we do as moms and i said god whatever it takes just bring him to you and at that Damn. night there's the lights across the highway and dad just knew we just knew and i'm like oh my gosh but that was a wake-up call that yeah. was just a time you know and sometimes those things happen to right. put you back right and at the time it's like the end of the world yes. there's no you know but it but there's moments like that that i tell even like my guests yeah. when you hit moments like that you can choose two ways of how you want to deal with it. You can either deal with it like, oh, like blame, do the blame game. It's everyone else's fault. Or are you going to like stop and think like I got myself into this Mm -hmm. situation? You have that choice. Look internally and be like, okay, what brought me here? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I was, you know, you can make all these excuses, but at the end of the day, you got yourself into that. Mm -hmm. And are you going to keep doing it and repeating yourself? Or are you going to, you know, learn from that? Learn from it. And so sometimes, and I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. Some people make the same mistakes Mm -hmm. over and over and we all have our own, uh, we all have our own vices that we just give into and Mm -hmm. we all have our own battles. Some people it's alcohol. Some people it's, you know, I don't know, just drugs or anything that, that they just battle with. Mm -hmm. But those are the things that keep you 
you know, go, you know, humble too and keep you closer to God. Yeah. Keep you drawing near to, near to him, you know. Yeah. Or so like. So str- if everything was so easy, you know. Yeah. If everything you know, everybody was easy. Everybody has a struggle, a battle, and it's how you choose how to. True. Get through it. Dang. So, so you raised, so after you finished college and everything, like when did you like actually take a break and like full-time mom? Like how old was I? Four and a half. Like right, about right four. Right after school. Because I pretty much graduated from UNM and decided to stay home for 17 years. So I would already have 26 years at the schools so if I would have went to work right away. Yeah. But like it was hard leaving. I think, I don't know, I guess just because being without my mom for some of those years, it was important for me to raise you guys. And I, with you, I wasn't there as much. Mm-hmm. Just with school and me and dad, you were shuffled. So I think as soon as school ended, my plan was just like, I want to have more kids and I want to stay home. Mm-hmm. Even with my degree. So I did for 17 years. I mean, that's where, you know, you threw, I had Luke right after about a year. You know, we right away Dang. had Luke soon right after school. And then you had Hannah like I mean, we three tried years Hannah, after. They're three years apart. And then like Dalton came in. I had Dalton. I had Malachi. I would just. Yeah. My house our house turned into the like the, the daycare that's like for everyone. Bring, yeah. Like our house, mm-hmm. we had everything like big backyard, yes. four wheelers, horses, uh, and that's you what name me it. dad wanted was just a place for. To yeah. raise you guys, it was just perfect. Like all the sleepovers for every baseball team I was on, wrestling, like we had the tent in the backyard, tent on the, uh, sleep on the trampoline. Tents inside the house. Yeah, <laughs> tents inside the house. Yeah, so and that's it. It's, that's the way I wanted it. So I got to be home, you know, all through Luke and Hannah, and you were all ready, I think, in, wait, kinder? Maybe, yeah. Like first, first grade, grade. First grade, yeah. Like 1999. You were like five and a half. When I had Josh, when yeah. I had Luke. So, like, throughout, like, all this, and because the way you raised me, you know, I'll, I'll definitely say you're the person that introduced me to God and kind of, like, church and, you know, dad, too, of course. But, like, yeah. you guys both raised me very core Christian values of, like, right and wrong and mm-hmm. uh, weren't strict about it. But you guys, like, taught me how to kind of, like, love God and embrace God. Mm-hmm. But, like, how old do you, were you when you, like, kind of first, like... My Not, like knew testimony. about God or because you weren't really? raised really like no. grandpa and honor you weren't no, like Catholics and holidays like traditional you know, Catholics traditional, go on the Christmas or whatever first Holy Communion Easter confirmation we did that but when I going back to meeting dad and it was even right before I met dad and probably during the time of the divorce mm-hmm. <clears> your mom and dad in my parents divorce yes not my divorce <laughs> i know i'm like <laughs> you're on my divorce when my divorce so I'm like, back dang, okay life. we're getting to juicy stuff now what we'll tell me <laughs> and so um yeah so shortly after that time moving to belen and just during those hard times like you said you know for me my hard times were like that 14 15 yeah you said you hit those roadblocks those blocks so those are probably mine of course that's a tough you know, age for a divorce we're living to in happen belen. too yeah and my mom stayed back. We're with my dad. I'm with my sister. Jen was, I think, nine. And um, just hard, you know, being pulled from everything. So I, on my own, was already pursuing God in a way. Yeah. And I would go with my Auntie Helen and my Tata. Mm-hmm. And it was during Lent. I remember that year. And they'd go every night to the church and pray the rosary, pray the rosary. And I would go. I'm like, can I go with you? I was just, like, reaching for something mm-hmm. else because I like was purpose. just Like purpose. Like, what's the purpose of all this? Yeah. I was just feeling like sad, empty. sad and lost and what's going on in mm-hmm. my life. And so uh, going and lighting candles. I remember one even time just going into the Catholic Church and lighting a candle and just going before God and not, not even knowing how to pray or what to say, but just mm-hmm. like, here I am, Lord, this life is hard right now. Yeah. And then I meet Dad shortly after that. And so he just takes me to that next level of the relationship that, you know. So Dad I was already have. had a relationship with God. Oh, like yeah. he was already, so he's, you could say he was a big factor in that. He was already. For your life? Yeah. Dad has always been good in that area forever. And so when we had those conversations as friends, I told him, yeah, I'm going with my, I guess just me telling him I've been going to the church at Mm -hmm. night and praying the rosary. And he was like, so faith, you have faith. And then he just said he found love with me more after that. (laughs) (laughs) But we talked about faith and that was one of our longest conversations when we first met. Yeah. Was just faith in God. And he taught me so much at that point, Mm -hmm. you know, just having a relationship and it just started from there. It sparked from there. Dang. That's and so you, crazy that, like, he met you at that time where you were uh-huh. kind of seeking, too. Vulnerable. Because if he met you at open. another time, like, you know, like, everything, yeah. it was, like, a perfect yeah. 
So it's the beginning of all of that, of those conversations and taking me to a new place with the Lord and having a relationship and knowing what that was, mm -hmm. knowing what that is, you know, it was different. Yeah. It changed the course for me. And like you guys served in the church all growing up too. Like you guys mm -hmm. were the leader of like the youth group for a while, weren't you? In different places. Kind of yeah. like mm -hmm. I remember going like on like retreats with like Jesse Maesta and yeah. David Maesta and we all those. We were always involved in James, some way. Jimmy, shout out to Jimmy. He was a guest. Yeah. He grew up James. in church, you know, Calvary Chapel, Rio Grande Valley. Um, definitely for almost 20 years and yeah, I, that's, I don't regret any, you know, part of that, like raising you guys in the church. That yeah. was every Sunday. That's what we do. Go home. We have breakfast. We, you know, it was mm -hmm. that, that day was for that. And in between, if I did Bible study, women's Bible study, you, Hannah would go with me and, or you guys, you know, so mm -hmm. you guys were definitely. You guys had a really cool, like good community, yeah. like the Canes, Janelle, yeah. Auntie Guy, had, yeah. Uncle Dave. Uh, so friends like that were coming in our life too. We would do was, Bible study yeah. in, in our homes, and a serve in the church. It was like both. You know, right. we had our friends that were Christians. You know, all the friends, Tyler, mm -hmm. the Canes you grew up with, and uh, you know Thomas and Tim and everybody, and then um, family, and then church. You know, mm -hmm. it was like a mix of everything. It should be that way. Yeah, you know, that's just that's what some people like. It's important to get into like a community mm -hmm. like that, of even people that like aren't. Like, there's some people that I met through church that I probably wouldn't normally be friends with. Mm -hmm. Like, on a normal whatever. Yeah, Mylan. Yeah. Mylan is, to this day, I'll say, like, one of my best, best friends. And yeah. we haven't seen each other in a while. But, like, I met him through the church. And, like, Mylan was, like, Life this skater friends. dude who had, like, long emo hair. And, like, he was, like, he had, like, snake bite piercing. Like, totally opposite of me. Like, I was, like, wearing Wranglers with my shirt tucked in. And, like, him and Nick Martinez. Mm -hmm. Nick Martinez was a guest. Like, all these guys that I wouldn't even... But we all had, like, this community of, like, God. Yes. And, like, we had, like, Mariano. He was, like, a soccer player with all the Mexicans. Like, he would, like, hung out with that crew. Mm -hmm. And then we had... And then... But, like, church, on that one night a week, we were all, like, best friends. Yeah, youth group was important for you guys, too. Yeah. And well, so it's hard because, like, high school is ruthless. Mm -hmm. Like, it's hard to be, like, a have a relationship with God, especially in high school. Yeah. Because there's, like, it, high school is just ruthless. Like, especially in, like, Blend, like, there's, you know, being on the wrestling team, like, with all these guys that are way older. Like, when I was a freshman, everyone was already seniors. That was, like, and on varsity. And in a Christian home. And yeah, so you guys are, like, don't, yeah. you know, raising me right, and then I'll go to wrestling practice, and they're, yes. like, yeah, yeah, you haven't been with a girl yet. Like, just, you know, but all of that. But that was my, because, I mean, at the time, homeschool was... And it still is, you know, important to, to each his own, whoever wants to. I, a lot of my friends homeschooled yeah. at that time. And God just kept putting, like, in my heart for you guys to be. Because for me, how I found really the Lord and that relationship was meeting dad in school. In high school, in regular high school. In high school, in regular high school and having that encounter. And I think dad touched a lot of people, too. Yeah. And I just felt like I want that for my kids. I want my kids to be that light. I want right. my kids to be... And it's, like not, it's not about being perfect, but I want I wanted you guys to be in the world mm -hmm. and be around those people and be the one that's praying at the wrestling team. And I know it was hard for you guys. You yeah, know? it was hard. But at the same time, like, I feel like we had, uh, you raised us with strong enough core values to where we never, ever went, like, too far. Yeah. And hopefully we did change some change some lives, you know? Well, like, all of the people balance, that were, you know, that. grew up, like, even Philip Gonzalez, like, yeah. be, t being with him every... Like, I wouldn't have met some of my best friends if I didn't go to... Yes, yeah, so like, me and Dad didn't encourage, like, stay away from bad kids. It yeah. was the opposite. Yeah, I it was like, that. no, you be a light. These people yes. need you, you know, and try and be positive. And if anybody you met or the kids with me, I'm like, bring them in. Bring yeah. them home. Bring them, yes, let's, you know. Mm -hmm. And just being that light to the people, you know. The yeah. kids that didn't have hope, you know, at those young ages. Mm -hmm. So... I know that Luke took it a step further, and he really, you know, um, with Made Alive, he went in and he did a the Bible study at the high school. Yeah. And, and all of Shout you guys. Shout out to so, Luke. Luke's yeah, a soldier. You know, he, he went <clears throat> and did it, and he, you know, um, arranged a club because only students could do that. Mm -hmm. So he, he did cool. that, and of course, handed to all of you guys. I'm proud, and I, I don't regret, you know, anything raising yeah. you guys in that aspect. Yeah, Glad you thank you for that. Times. Yeah, that's, and then it gets you ready for life. It does, and and for the that's real world. that's part of why I love doing this so much is because mm -hmm. I like actually genuinely enjoy getting to know people and hear their story mm -hmm. and just like you know we, we have so much small talk and we're so quick like we like when is the last time someone sat down for an hour and just got to be one talk. on one you know and so that this is like an excuse to do that you know.
like it keeps you like you have you're locked in right now like you I'm have no choice but to yeah. talk to me <laughs> but like you go Even out and we talk every night at midnight. i know yeah we always have our late conversations i'll text my mom at like 12 i'm like hey you up you're like yeah check out this thing <laughs> <laughs> you'll sure respond Funny right videos. away we're like the only ones night awake. owls no matter what i know i know but this is special this yeah is and so like it's an excuse to hang out and get to know p and some mm-hmm. people you know everyone has their own story everyone that you wouldn't think like they all come through these different avenues of life and sometimes like they'll drop like gems of like uh truth on me and stuff that help me like be yeah, a better we person learn from each other i learn from my students every day you know yeah. we learn from each other yeah you have to be open to that like i even like and don't even think like it's an age thing or like a like, like someone i can only get learn from people my age or yeah like i i when i was coaching in junior wrestling like all those kids that I coached, I learned more about yeah. myself and how to be a better person just by coaching those kids. Yeah, you do. And I even had some of them on the podcast, Josh Jaramillo, Antonio, mm-hmm. uh, what's Tone's last name? Aragon. Antonio Aragon. And they were like, Antonio was literally like eight years old and Josh was maybe 12. And like I sat down, had a podcast with them, and like it was the best thing ever. They're like your best friend. Yeah, I'm like He's my like, best Mom, friends. Mom, I gotta are... go and playing um, Nintendo with. <laughs> Tone. <laughs> I love my wrestlers. So I, I'm going to definitely get yeah. back into coaching one they day. I miss you but for sure when I see them all the time. I know. They're always like, tell Coach But it's Josh so crazy because a lot of them are in high school now. You know, Josh Ademio is going to be a junior. You oh, know, yeah. I saw um, him too just recently. Yeah. So there's that group of kids that you'll always remember. I mm-hmm. mean, well, now, like, you're a full time teacher now. Mm-hmm. So, like, once we all finished high school and stuff, you dove right back into that, right? Pretty much. Like Hannah you... was in sixth grade, and um, it was just the opportunity of a teacher that left, and they called me. Do you want to come into this position? And Hannah was in sixth grade, mm. and, I was, and I could have even so went Hannah even was earlier. your first class. Hannah was my first class. Wow. And so I said, I guess it's about time. Were you really? Nervous? Yeah. Well, and I was subbing a lot too. There oh, so you were already Chavez. kind so I was of like, like the Dennis Chavez mom already. The on. cupcakes, the the mom, you know, organizing. Uh, parent meetings and different things so um everything good yeah yeah, you're good sir so um so that yeah a full-time position came up wow sixth grade and hannah was in sixth grade what did she say was she like was she happy because hannah's like your baby like she was and she wasn't yeah she's my baby girl she well she was in the other class she was in the other class so i took over another class she was in the other one yeah and so um yeah, we'd see each other in the hallway sometimes, and she'd wave at me, and I'd wave, like, get back to class, you know. <laughs> uh, but then, like, as the year went on, I just wanted her with me, you know. She just kept, like, what are you doing? And then mm-hmm. I was doing things that the other teacher wasn't doing, and I don't know. And I finally thought, I just, I'm going to ask the principal. Cool. So Hannah agreed to it, and we put her in, so I had her in my class. Wow. My first year, and that was, like, my first, those were, like, my babies, my so first year. So you just dove into it, like. Yeah, pretty much. The light went off. Did it? I don't know. Which one? I heard it. I felt it. I don't know. Some light. Is it good though? Glitched. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that was my first class. And Dang. I was really close and to so those kids. And so since then, you have you haven't taken a year off, huh? No. I only have 10 years. Seems like forever, but I have 10 more. So I have a long ways to go. I'm like in my 11th year. Cool. But just because I was home for 17 years mm-hmm. and I don't regret that either because I guess I could be retiring now mm-hmm. soon, which I guess could, I mean, if I look at it, it depends how you look at it. You know? I think you did it perfect because if you were teaching already, like you would have that regret of missing out on such a, these yeah. big moments in our lives. Yeah. And then. And I feel like now if I have to stay late or the school, I feel like I can give more to my, yeah. my students, my families, my school, and I'm not having somebody at home. Mm-hmm. It's just, you guys are older. It's a little bit different. Well, so. now we're all out of the house. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's good because now you get yeah, to teach a whole new group of kids, like treat yeah. them like your own you know i'm excited I'm, I'm i'm excited for the next 10 years i don't have like uh 10 more years mm-hmm. i mean i love what i do every day even though it's hard sometimes yeah. i'm exhausted but it's i can't imagine doing anything else but yeah it, i think the timing was perfect it takes a lot to be a teacher i mm-hmm. i i will say this like i've said this several times i, I teachers should get paid way more well, we like we're literally we've got, trusting we've got some you guys. Good raises. Did you? It's, it's getting better. No, mom, you're supposed to keep it going. Well, no, yeah. we want. Them. <laughs> it's gotten better though. I think well, from I like, the, actually, I'm good. From the past, it, it's it's gotten compared better to how it was in the last couple of years. Didn't you get Teacher of the COVID Year in Valencia County? No. Valencia County Teacher of the Year or something. 
I've been telling people no, that. For no, us. Josh, what you <laughs> teach your beer? It was what, it, what it was is it was like different levels. It was like a level four, level three, level five. Okay. And back then they would uh, look at your performance of your students. So scores. you had the highest performance. So it was an upgrade. exemplary level five. Me and uh, Sandra Goldberg. It wow. Was, uh, a few years back at a Dennis Chavez. So they would look at your overall performance of students' scores and proficiency. At the beginning and then at the end. And it was this a tiered system of how they looked at teachers and yeah. how well they did by their students. So me and Sandra were, because of our scores were so high with our students, we were exemplary. It was like level five. Dang. So we had like a big... I'm doing a cheering. Sin, since you don't have the headphones, I got the cheering. And uh, we had like a gala and it, it, it was it was neat, you know, but it's it all goes back to your students and how they're performing and that's how they, which is that it should be like that. Yeah. Well, congrats for that. That's yeah. awesome. That's and a I'm good kind feeling. Of I'm pretty hardcore in my class. You are. You're, she's very strict. <laughs> Gosh. Well, you're the you're very very I nice, am. but when you walk in, you're like, sit down, and they're like, no, I'm not. You're all Christian. No, I'm kidding. Stop. No, yeah. but they respect you. I feel like you're very good at like leveling yeah. with them and not just being so authoritative where they like, uh. Yeah. But you like they respect you, me. you know they you like you have to respect them and they respect you back. Yeah, a lot of pe- teachers don't do that. They're yeah. like, J- I just demand respect, but I'm not going to give yeah, you. Yeah, no. I love my students. I learn from them every day, but. Yeah, I'm on that. I'm I'm just like it's a time to learn, and there's a there's a time to have fun too. Yeah. I mean, we have for birthday parties, we have like dance parties. I love to dance. You know, I Heck love to yeah. dance. So they get to pick a song, and at first it was Happy Birthday, and they dance. Now they get to pick a, a clean song, a clean version, and uh, so I have country coming through, and then we have that one song play for their birthday like party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they just go crazy. So they have their own song, just, whatever, like yeah. a rap, as long as it's clean or whatever. It's a clean version. We've had some clean rap. So and, all the songs like. Eh, eh, eh. All the rap songs. They find, there's been more country lately, but the kids, I just let them, you know, as long as the song is good, and I just put it on loud, and we just go, we like Charlie Brown, we just all start dancing. Heck yeah. Including you love me. to dance. You have always, Including I think me. I got that from you, because I like to dance a lot too. I know. I just I forget who, where I'm, remember when, um, what was that called when you used to play with it? The Wii. Oh yeah, Wii, uh, oh, Just Dance. Shit. And they'd be like, it takes two to make a thing go right. And I'd be like that. Do, do, do. It takes two yeah, to make a thing. Josh, it I know. And yeah, then it, you would even show up at my dances. I know, I did that once. Oh, my God. She was the she was like that mom. I know. That wanted to be involved in everything. Like, I want to. But now that I'm older, let me just finish this story, but then I'll go back to like how. So she, I'm at, I'm at the dance, right? I'm at the middle school dance. It's like my first dance ever. And I, I'm, like, finally dancing, like, with a girl. And, like, you know, you're dancing behind them or whatever. And she was so tall that her butt was, like, at my chest. Because <laughs> I was so short. And I was, like... You were always so tiny. Little tiny guy. And I'm dancing like that. And I look to the right. And I see my mom literally looking right at me. Well, they asked for chaperone. But you didn't even tell first... me you were going to go. I didn't. You just showed up. And I was all... They're all man. chaperones. I'm the first to like, sign the chaperone you're always Josh Where's Josh? And then not only that, I didn't have a babysitter for her. Do you remember that? I had Luke and Hannah Ooh, with me. Ooh, forget I'm it. I'm so sorry I did that to you. Jeez. But everyone loves you now. Yeah. All my friends, even in high school, like, you on over my friends. You're, they probably liked you more. Oh, I love your friends. But I love like, them all. But, like, the, what I'm going to go back to is you love to be there for all, every special moment. Like, you wanted mm. to... You realize what the importance of, like, that first middle school dance... Yeah. And that's why you always, you were one of the first parents to always have a video camera. Mm-hmm. You would like make it a thing to record Christmases, record us just hanging out at the house. Like, yeah, all your sleepovers. Yeah, like a lot of people don't think to do that, but you, we have so much. I'm still like if we ever do an Against the Grain documentary on my life, we're going to use a lot of those. Yeah. You know, just how we grew up, like everything that I've said, guys, I've never, ever like inflated anything everything i say is like the truth you know like how, how we were raised it yeah. really was like that yeah, you know it was and so well you want to capture that moment yeah. and even like as a mom like i know there's some moms out there like let me take a picture let me take a picture and it's like you know and i know sometimes once in a while if we're all together they get that way like oh take a picture for mom get it over with hurry i like but, <laughs> but as moms like that's I hope there's moms watching this, but, you know, they'll understand. Shout out to the Against the Grey Moms, <laughs> ATG Moms. But, you know, you understand you're just trying to capture that moment. And even now as adults, when I have everybody, Luke's in town, we're all together. Kid, yeah. Everybody's here. It's like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. So it's still capturing that moment. I don't mind taking pictures, but I hate doing retake pictures five times. Oh, I know. It's like one and done for it's me. It's hard one and done. When my eyes are well, closed open all your the dang time. eyes. I'm like, wait, my eyes are shut. <laughs> I'm like, that's just your face when you smile. Like I know, they just shut. They're probably shut right now. Melissa Godzilla. 
Um, yeah, I know. I know what you mean, though. Like, you, you make yeah. those. I'm kind of like like that, too. Like, I like to. That's actually another reason why I started the podcast is because I wanted yeah. to capture moments. Good idea. You know, I'm even looking back two years ago, yes. having conversations of with friends that, you know, I'll always have that. I think and if great. I miss them, I could go rewatch it and be like, wow, you know. I know everybody asks, time. so what does it mean? What is against grain? They always want this. And yeah. there is that long thing that you wrote, but I'm like, really? Like you our mission loves, statement. Yeah. And Brandon, too, you just love people. You mm-hmm. guys are people got, you know, you just love people. Yeah. And everybody has I don't a like to have and, a, an agenda, really. I mean, I know, like, every episode's different. Like, I'm yeah. not going to. And it is. It's pretty comfortable. But I don't want to put myself in a box where, like, we're only a fitness podcast or we're only a yeah. motivational podcast because... Then you're excluding yeah. all the other amount of people that could yeah. be a guest, you know? It's like a people who they are podcast. Yeah. It's their story kind of podcast. If, as long as you're a person, you could be on the right. pod. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? I have, I have, I'm so excited to be in this new studio. It's so nice. It's uh, cool. It just feels good, it really huh? Is Don't nice. you like? When I first came in, I've been nervous, but then I walked <laughs> in, I'm like, oh, this is pretty neat. Yeah. This is like. This really feels good. It really is the beginning of yeah, a new chapter. It's pretty cool. And when I made the commitment to, you know, dedicate a whole room to the podcast, it really made me want to, you know, level it up and make it right and make my guests feel comfortable when they come in. Yeah. And Because, you know, when you're talking, you're just like looking around and yeah. I don't want us to it's be like in a, bl- just a You have everything b- black perfect, room. Josh. Everything yeah, I tried. Perfect. So, and then I got the futon right there. So guys, like yes. if you're going to be a guest, you can bring some friends who hang out in the podcast room. We got the neon sign. That's the coolest right there. Um, yeah, I find I that it. I wall I, I mounted it like that. So I'm glad you appreciate art. I do. I love art so much. That's one of the things that uh, I think Nonnery probably mm-hmm. uh, instilled in me mm-hmm. is just All three you know you. little details and stuff like that. Canvas. Mm-hmm. My Nonnery was a very very good artist. She her specialty was painting on uh, uh, pottery. Or, like, pretty rocks. rocks. So she would get, like, a beautiful rock that had, like, you know, that was orange or something. And she would paint, like, a beautiful Santa Fe church on it. Mm-hmm. And then she'd put her initial. And her she was just amazing. Detail. You should she give me one lefty. of her paintings to put in here. Oh, my gosh. I have so much. Yeah. Just to I'll put somewhere. Put I mean, I don't know. The room's, the maybe wall's Hannah filling up, but maybe right there. found some more of her sketchings, her old... We have paintings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You definitely need to put something in here. And this is kind of one thing that she taught me and even my friend Samirmis, who's also yes. an artist. She she reminds me of Nanari a lot. Mm-hmm. Like she's kind of that in my life now. And uh, in her art room, it's everything pictures uh, and it's all for inspiration. Yeah. So like it puts her in that mindset and gets her creative mind going. Oh, for sure. And so I kind of got this, like all of my favorite musicians, all of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, we even got the new Bronco uh picture right there oh yeah unm lobos like you know just different things that i elvis. like to the elvis we got the elvis mugshot right over here. yeah so i don't know i want to get like more mugshots that would be cool like of johnny cash or That'd be some cool of my picture. favorite artists but yeah so i'm proud of you yeah so every other week i'm gonna try and do it uh i know it's been almost over a month and a half since we did an episode but part of it was us moving and then i've also just been traveling a lot this summer uh, for those of you guys that that wa- follow me on Instagram, we've been going. We went to, we went to New Jersey. We went to New York. Princeton. We went to we went to Hawaii. We went to uh, Washington D.C. Little trips, yeah. Within like we, four months. And then we and Dad even went to um, Arlington to see Dalton graduate. Went to you Port guys went Worth. to Texas. It was like a lot of big events. It was yeah. like a season. It was of just that. one of those summers where everyone's graduating. Like important. Um, you guys renewed your vows on the beach. That was beautiful. I know. That was a dream come true. Honestly, that's probably one of my favorite moments in life. Oh. Just being so... red. We all ran on the water. We didn't even care. We got it's soaking. It's like we owned. It's like we were the only ones there. On it that literally beach. looked like a, a scene like from nothing. The Bachelor. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. The water was so clear. Because. Yeah, like in Hawaii, there's people on every beach. There's like hundreds of people every beach. And it just so happened there was no one. And the sun was setting perfect. And it was kind of cloudy and a little bit windy. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be. We're getting scared. Yeah. I'm I'm getting emotional just thinking about that. And then Abby just kept saying, Melissa, it's going to be perfect. Just wait. And it was. It it, it felt like the lighting. I'll never forget the lighting. It just was. It was just perfect. Mm -hmm. Everybody was, you know, glowing. 
It was just beautiful. That was, was a very like fun moment. It was, it was a and Kiana was there time. playing the ukulele. Oh, yeah. Couldn't get better than that. A ukulele as I'm walking in. It was just... That was, was like, your, so like a, that. a fun, legit wedding because you guys got married real quick, young. Like yeah. you didn't really have like a, like it was just, you know, Uncle Marty was there. And mm -hmm. Auntie Karen Auntie was Karen. my maid of honor and Uncle Marty. They were like our padrinos. They were the, the couple we go to for everything. Right. And it was a scared young couple. And uh, Auntie was young and so it was, you know, but like, made it right. To but do it, it just, now with your kids. It was better. It to was, have Hannah it was honestly be your maid of honor perfect. and then me with dad and Luke. Because I had been wanting to do it 10, 20, I mean, all these years. And it was like 30. I told Luke this was it. This timing was perfect. Yeah. This was the time. Like you being old enough, everybody, and Hannah and you and Luke, and it was God's plan. Yeah. God's I plan. had it better than that. God's plan. For you guys to witness that. Yeah. So we got, we got a lot of stuff. Yeah. We're very blessed. I mean... You know, I think after the pandemic, like we really just took full advantage of like, you know, this could all go away again, you know, because during that short. time you're like, oh, I wish I could do this. I would. So whenever we actually could do it, we're like, no, let's do it because you do don't it. know. Maybe this winter everyone's buying Max again. They could just be like, nope. Well, just life in general, just not or even, just not life even in like general. the pandemic, just life is short. Like you're every right. day. Like you don't even know what tomorrow is, brings. Uh, you know, we think, oh, we're going to do it then. And sometimes you plan things, but it's really about life, just embracing every day and yeah, and living that fullest, you know. And, of course, we work and we have regular lives, but just being appreciative for one day, every yeah. day. Heck, yeah. Well, do you have anything else? Hey, what's your Instagram? Do you remember what it's called? Oh I'll tag it in the it's in the Melissa bio. and Brian, but I think there's underscores it's like in Melissa there. It's like underscore under, Brian for me. against the Melissa Griego. Follow her on TikTok Brian against the Griego. <laughs> Don't you have a TikTok? It's like against the Griego. Yes, but I got banned. What? Yes. For what? Me and, we were just dancing. Me and my students. What the heck? I had to make another account. Well, because every year I, I did a TikTok with my students. Like at the end of the year, I told like I wait till the end of the year. And uh, we did a TikTok dance. And then this last one, we did a TikTok dance. But I guess it had like a, you know how they do like a dance, you know. Yeah, so they just dances, flagged so it. One little boy went like this. And they flagged it. And they flagged it. After all that's out Dang there. It. But maybe because I, so my, uh, my uh, TikTok was called Against the Griego. <laughs> and that's what my students named it. Because I'm like, what could I name my TikTok? I, I didn't even have a TikTok account. Yeah. And they're like, I know we can make it. Let's make it Against the Griego. Heck yeah. So that's what it is, I believe. So I guys, um, if this is your first episode that you're watching, because you draw such a big audience, I already know, like, so there's so many people that love you. Uh, it would mean the world to, to me if you guys actually took the extra step and subscribed and, uh, right. you know, like the video because, you know, we're, we're underground. We're not like, like the only ways that you can like watch our next video is if you subscribe and it alerts you. And cause you know, I think that's just the best thing to do and it doesn't cost nothing. You literally just press subscribe and that's it. Yes. Yeah, and, uh, subscribe. Yeah. And if you guys want to be a guest, reach out too. I'm always looking for new, uh, guests to hang out with. I already have a bunch lined up, but, uh, hopefully we, I, I want a lot of people to see the studio and just be with everyone, you know? Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. And it took me a while to say yes, huh? Say it did. yes to the yes. What? Say yes to the mic. Just say yes to the. <laughs> I just it took kept me on. a while to say yes. So who was the first in our family? It was Dad, then Luke. Yeah, Dad was no problem. Luke came. Luke, on. and then my mom. Like I would bring it up, and you'd be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> no, 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 like you just always oh get nervous. God. So I was like, but I knew I was gonna oh get God, you on, but know. it was like in the right time, you yeah, know? Yeah, it was the right time. And then for my birthday, he gave me these. Yes, I gave you those. With my birthday gift, and I'm like, okay, what does this mean? He's like, Mom, it's like I have <laughs> it's a new time. studio. This is your first. I'm like, let's do it. Heck yeah, let's put on our glasses and take yeah. like I'm gonna take a screenshot. We'll just do like a thumbs up right. for the camera, okay? For the camera. Okay, one, two, three. Heck yeah. Well, Mom, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very. Much. I'm honored to have you as a guest on the podcast. I'm honored to be here. If you ever want to come back, um, maybe during football season for the Vikings, we'll uh, we'll chat about it. Love football season. Let's go. go Vikings. Shout out to Max Holloway too. He just won for Hawaii. Representing we love, his people in Maui. Yeah, we love we love MMA and football. Praying for. The yeah, praying for Maui. everyone in Maui after just coming back from Hawaii. Yes. Uh, I mean, look, I got Maui all over my studio. I it, I went there not too long ago, and it holds very... To explore both islands. Yeah, so I hold And you never think twice about things happening like you that. You don't. Not one minute would you think anything like mm -hmm. that. So I'm just... My heart goes out. Yeah. Just praying for those people. 
We love you guys. Tune in, guys. Uh, this was episode 60 in the new studio. I'm so honored and so happy. Let's go have some fun. Woo!